If you're tired of feeling weak on the bike, you found the right video. I'm going to show you step-by-step step the same full body strength workout that I use here at MTF for our amateurs and our professionals. And if you stay till the end of the video, I'll share with you a little secret that will absolutely change how you train. Let's get right into it. I always start my workouts with a quick dynamic warm up. Just a couple of short things for the lower body and for the upper body. I would also recommend including a warm up set that doesn't count towards your total sets for the exercise. The first exercise we're doing is bench press. There's a reason why bench press is always included in most gym workouts. It's one of the most functional and beneficial exercises you can do. It uses the whole body and it trains the horizontal press movement pattern that we use all the time on the dirt bike. A couple of small points here. Make sure your grip is wide enough so that at the bottom of the movement, your wrists are stacked over your elbows, not inside your elbows. Pay attention to the angle of your elbows. As you get to the bottom of the movement, your shoulders shouldn't make a perfect T-shape, but rather a T that has the tops bent down around 30 degrees. The next exercise we're going to do is leg press. Every gym has one of these, so you should have no trouble getting access to this. A couple short points on the leg press. You want to go low enough into the movement to make at least a 90 degree angle with your knees. Getting to 90 degrees has been shown to be most beneficial for strength and athleticism. If you go past 90, there's nothing wrong with that. But the idea there is that you're getting a greater stretch of the muscle, which is a powerful signal for muscle growth. Also, feel free to point your toes out just a little bit to be more comfortable during this movement. The next exercise is called a dumbbell seal row. Key points to watch for in this movement is I really want you to squeeze your back muscles as if you were trying to pinch a pencil in between your shoulder blades. I also want you to be slightly lifting your chest off the bench every time you row. This will engage your mid and lower back muscles, the same muscles that get really tired when you do stand-up motos or when you ride sand. Up next is a classic, Barbell Romanian Deadlift, or RDL for short. The key thing we're watching for with this lift is not letting the weight break our posture. If you watch a rider like Jet Lawrence, he always has perfect posture, no matter what the bike is doing. We're trying to do the exact same thing while lifting this weight. If you're not feeling the burn in the backside of your legs, you're doing something wrong. Hey guys, real quick, if you don't know what to do in the gym and you want me to write you more workouts like this one, I would recommend checking out MTF Online Training. We have programs for everybody, whether you're a true beginner or you're trying to make it as a professional. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out. Exercise number five is called Bulletproof Shoulders because it's going to do just that. This exercise works the rotator cuff and upper back muscles like nothing you've ever done. A couple of tips, keep the weight light. We're working really small muscles with this movement, and form is way more important than how much weight you're lifting. Second, really separate each movement into distinct phases. It's easy to get lazy and sort of blend them all together. Our second to last exercise is something you've probably never done before. It's a backwards walk on a treadmill. Walking backward works your knees in a way that nothing else does. It's going to strengthen the muscles and tendons that run down the front of your leg, making you less likely to get hurt there if you crash. To do this properly, put your treadmill on max incline and set the speed to two miles per hour. Start with your hands on the rails to get a feel for the balance, and then when you're ready, let go of the rails to make it more challenging and get the full effect. This is meant to be four minutes nonstop, so fight through the burn. The last exercise today is called a Copenhagen plank. To perform this exercise correctly, Go into a side plank position, but place your top leg on a bench and hover your bottom leg under the bench. The next thing you should focus on is pushing your hips forward and keeping your shoulders back. You should be in a straight line from the top of your head to your heel. Oh, and since we're only working one leg at a time, don't forget to do the other side. This exercise is meant to strengthen the adductor muscles, which are the muscles responsible for squeezing the bike. Now, the secret is going to change the way you train. This chart right here shows that rep ranges are on a continuum, which means it's not black and white which result are you getting from your training. On the top and bottom, it tells you how many reps you're doing, and in the middle, the words that are the largest and with the yellow background are the main result you're trying to get. But you'll notice that there are multiple results for each rep range. It's just a question of which adaptation are you getting the most of. For between two and six reps is mostly strength and power, but you're still gonna get some hypertrophy, which is a fancy word for muscle gain, and you're still gonna get some muscular endurance. Seven to 12 reps is mostly hypertrophy, but you're still gonna get some strength, some power, and some muscle endurance. 
And 13 to anything over 20 is mostly muscle endurance, but you're still getting a little strength, a little power, and a little hypertrophy. So what you need to do is pick a rep range that matches your goals and then stay consistent. Now that we know what we're doing for our strength training, let's get our cardio dialed in. You can do that by checking out this video next.